Well guys, it finally happened. Looks like one of my AC units just died. If you guys have an AC unit where the fan motor isn't spinning outside, but inside is blowing, stay with me in this video. I'm gonna show you guys how to troubleshoot your AC unit and get it up and running like it was before. Let's get yeah. at it. Hey guys, welcome back to the episode. To all my longtime subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all things that I do DIY, including reviews. All right, guys, we got a little problem here today. As you can see, I have one of my AC units here. This one is running uh, fine. However, this one stopped working. Even though I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is, I'm gonna walk you guys through the process of troubleshooting it from start to finish. But if you just want to know how to replace the fan motor, you can go ahead and skip to that section. We're going to go over testing of the contactor, testing of the capacitor, and then troubleshooting to see if it's actually the fan motor or the compressor that's bad. So with all this information, you should be able to troubleshoot your AC unit and figure out which component is bad in the future if you ever have an AC problem. So if you guys are up for the challenge, go ahead, grab yourself a set of screwdrivers, a multimeter, some pliers, and let's go ahead and troubleshoot this AC unit and get it working again. All right, so first things first, as you can see, the fan isn't running and I can hear this humming noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Even though we hear that humming, we're gonna go through all the troubleshooting process. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna remove this panel here where your power is, and it's only held in place by four screws on either side. All right, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna test our contactor. This is your contactor here. You have high voltage coming from the bottom here, from your disconnect, going into the bottom leads, and then once that switch closes, it's gonna transfer to the top leads and send power to the unit. So what you wanna do is set your meter to AC volts. So what you wanna do first is you wanna to check to make sure that the two coils on the side are transmitting 24 volts. So you can put one prong on one side, one prong on the other side, and see if it gives you 24 volts. And as you can see, we're at 26 volts. So we know that the AC unit inside is sending voltage to the contactor and the contactor is closed. Next up, what we want to do is we want to test to make sure that their incoming voltage is the correct voltage. So you put your prongs there. As you can see, I have 237.8 volts. And then we can go ahead and test the top to make sure that it's the same. And as you can see, we're getting 238 volts, which means that the contactor is transmitting the voltage from the top to the bottom, so you know that your contactor is good. If you weren't getting any voltage on the 24 volt lines, then you may have a faulty contactor or you may have some issue with your thermostat sending the signal out here. If the contactor is closed and you don't have any power coming from the top, then you know that there's an issue with the contactor itself. So now we know our contactor is good, now let's go ahead and jump to our capacitor. But the first thing we wanna do before we test the capacitors want to disconnect the power you should have a disconnect like this or a breaker box inside if you do remove the power next up we want to go ahead and test our capacitor as you can see my capacitor is here the first thing you want to do is you want to read the rating on your capacitor mine is a 45 plus seven and a half microfarad and the tolerance is plus or minus five percent which means that the reading should be either five percent higher or five percent lower than 45 or five percent higher or lower than seven and a half and i'll explain what it means if you notice here i have three connectors on the top one is a yellow which on mine is labeled c uh, one is blue which is labeled herm and one is brown which is labeled fan so what you want to do is you want to disconnect everything that's connected to your capacitor at first and if you don't know what's connected where just go ahead and take a picture that way when you reconnect everything you know where to connect everything back to an easy way to know which terminal goes where is your common is going to have the most prongs in my case it has four your compressor is going to have the second most in my case it has three and the fan is going to have the least which is two now before you test your capacitor what you want to do is you want to short them out and make sure that everything is shorted by getting a screwdriver that's insulated by shorting across all the prongs to make sure that it's safe to work with. Once it's safe to work with, you're going to go ahead and set your uh, multimeter to capacitance. In my case, it's indicated with two uh, lines separated. What you want to do first is put one of your leads on the common, and then you're going to press the next one on your herm, which is your compressor. Wait for it to read. And in my case, it's reading 44.45 microfarad, which is within the 5% of the 45. So we know that the compressor side of the capacitor is good. Now let's go ahead and test the fan side. Once again, leaving one contact, 
Once again, leaving one lead on the common, and then the next lead will be touching to the fan. Again, give it a second to read. And the reading is 7.319, which again is within the plus or minus 5% of the 7.5. So we know that our capacitor is good, so we can go ahead and reconnect everything the way it was. And now we can go ahead and test the fan motor and the compressor. All right, now that we've finished testing the capacitors and the contactor, we know that they're both good. Now it's time to determine whether we need to replace the fan motor or we need to replace the compressor. So here's what we want to do first. We want to go ahead and plug in back our disconnect and listen out for the humming. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I can hear a faint humming. So what I want to do first is obviously check to see if my fan is spinning, which it isn't. However, now I can go ahead and check to see if my compressor is running. And I can do this by feeling on the line right here. And I can feel a little movement in here pumping, which lets me know that my compressor is working and it's the fan motor that's bad. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the fan Fine. motor. First things first, before we work on the fan, we wanna make sure that our disconnect is removed and that there's no power going to our unit. Now the fan motor is just behind here, but in order to get to it, we're gonna to have to remove all the bolts that are located around the fan here. Once we remove those four bolts, we'll be able to flip this thing up on its side. Now the wires from the motor are running through that little pipe that you see right here, and it's going back into the unit in here. All right, once we got the fan out and flipped over, as you can see here, this is the power cables going back down to the unit. We have a yellow, a black, and a brown. And all we need to do is trace them where they come out and where they're connected to. And I traced it and I figured out the yellow wire is connected down at the bottom here. The black wire is connected to this pin right here. And the brown wire is connected to my capacitor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect all those wires. Now, if you ever need to know where the wires are connected and where to reconnect them, just take a picture. But I'm gonna disconnect the one from the contactor then disconnect the one connected to the contactor and then we can disconnect the one that's connected to the bottom of the contactor and it should just pull out like this and then all we need to do after that is just pull the wires out from our fan and lift our fan out and we can go ahead and start working on the replacement next you want to find a nameplate for the fan and it should have all the information and the most important thing that you need to know is you need to know the voltage the horsepower and the rpm once you have that information, you can either type the serial number and model number into Google, find an exact match, or a lot of the supply houses will have uh, universal re replacement motors. The fan is locked to the shaft with this nut here. So once you loosen this nut, you'll be able to slide the fan off of the shaft. With the bolt removed, we can go ahead and just slide the fan blade right off. Just like that. And then we can set this to the side. And now let's flip over our motor and disconnect it from the housing. It's only held in place with these four screws here. So once you loosen these screws, you'll be able to take this off. And now the housing just separates from the motor and you can set this to the side. All right, once you have your motors out, you want to match them up to see what the differences are. As you can see, this is the new universal motor. This is the old one. The old one is approximately a quarter inch taller. So what I want to do is I want to measure to see how far the top of this shaft is from this motor and then add a quarter inch and measure the same here and mark the shaft. So the height of the shaft on the original motor is about two and a half. So I'm going to put it on this one approximately two and three quarters. And I'm going to make a mark so that the blade sits about the same height on the new motor. That way when I slide the blade on, once I'm looking for is I'm looking for this mark. Now when you slide the blade on, you notice one side of the shaft is flat. So the screw is going to line up with this side of the shaft when you're tightening it. Apart from that, let's go ahead, let's slide this blade on and let's get this thing going. Line up, so now let's go ahead, line up the screw with the flat side and slide this blade all the way down onto the shaft. We're looking for a mark. And as you can see, we got our mark right about there. So with that, we can go ahead and tighten down our screw until it locks into place. You wanna make sure you get this nice and tight so that the shaft doesn't move once it's installed. You don't want this thing sliding up and down the so, shaft. Now let's go ahead and talk about the wiring for the universal motor. You're gonna have yourself a black, white, uh, and two browns, one with a stripe and one that's just solid brown. Now the way this is gonna work is your black and your white are going to go to your line inputs which are the ones that connected to your contactor and the brown and the brown stripe are going to go to your capacitor 
If you have an independent capacitor that control the fan, you're going to connect your brown and your brown with white stripe to that one. But in my case, since I only have one capacitor, I only need to connect, connect one brown in place of that exact brown wire that we had on our fan. All right, that's about it. Um, you'll notice you have two uh, other wires here. These are for rotation. So if you realize that your fan isn't rotating in the right direction and you're not getting any air blowing off of your coils, then it's rotating in the wrong direction. So you just unplug this and plug it in here and that should change the rotation. Now in my case, I know that the fan needs to be rotating clockwise, so I'll look for that whenever I'm installing it. Now let's go ahead and put the cover back on. It should already line up with the holes. Once we're ready to attach all our screws to hold our motor down, the only thing left to do is take the grounding cable that comes attached to your motor and slide it over one of the bolts and put your nut over it. Once you have this in place, we can go ahead and tighten down all of our remaining bolts making sure that everything is nice and snug. Now that all our bolts are nice and tight, we can go ahead, reinstall this thing. All right, once we got our fan in, we ran our cables back through the original hole. We're gonna go ahead and flip our fan over, line up the holes with the brackets here, and then we should be ready to go. One thing I wanna do in my case is I wanna keep this loop here that held, holds the cable, and I wanna make sure that I pull all the cables through so that this holes can fit directly into the hole right here, keeping these cables out of the way of the blades. And once we're done, all we really got to do is line up our holes right here. And now we can put our screws back in. Now we got all our cables routed through here and we can go ahead and reconnect them all. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put the black back on the contactor port that the other black was connected to. Connect the white to where the yellow was connected to. And now all I need to do is connect the brown wire to my, con to my capacitor here which will control the fan. Notice I don't use the brown and white one since I already have a single capacitor. If I had another capacitor for my fan, I would connect these two to that capacitor. Lastly, let's connect the brown to our capacitor. All right, with that, the only thing left to do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and test the unit to make sure it starts up. So what you wanna do is go inside and set your thermostat to cool, and then we can go ahead and plug in the main power outside. Once our unit is on inside, you can see our contactor is pulled in, which means that it's calling for cooling. So the only thing left to do now is to plug in our disconnect and let's see if it starts up. And it starts up. However, my fan is running in the wrong direction. So I want to go ahead and change it so it runs clockwise. In order to do that, you want to make sure that you disconnect the power first again. And all you want to do is swap these two cables around. You want to swap the purple for the yellow and the yellow for the purple. They should just plug out like this and plug in. Likewise, repeat the process on the same one. Once you're done with that, let's go ahead, turn this thing back on and see if it works. The only thing left to do now is go ahead and plug in our disconnect. We hear our unit start up. Our fan is spinning in the right direction. So we're good to go. We can go ahead and feel our line. It's getting cold, so we know that everything is cooling back to normal. The only thing left to do now is to neaten up all these wires, strap them all together, put back on the panel, and that should be it. There you have it. All my wires are zip tied together. Everything looks nice and neat. Now we can go ahead, put the cover back on, and we should be good to go. And now that's it. You can see our cover is back on. AC unit is blowing nice and cool can feel the warm air coming off of it and it's just a matter of time now before everything runs cool and our AC is back to running as normal. All right, welcome back guys. As you can see here, both of my units are running. We got the fan motor replaced and it's good to go now and everything is working awesome. Listen, I hope you guys found it helpful and if you did, please don't forget, give me a thumbs up, like this video and share it with your friends and make sure that you're subscribed so you can stay up to date with all things that I do DIY. Now guys, listen, the replacement of your fan motor is uh, another common problem apart from the contactor and the capacitor. Those are the three main things that could go wrong with your um, AC unit and that I believe are something that every homeowner should be able to tackle. If you followed me in this process, you learned how to troubleshoot your contactor, to troubleshoot your capacitor and to replace the fan motor. And the fan motor is no big deal. You just take off the housing, disconnect the fan, slide it off the shaft, put on your new one, reconnect the power and you're good to go. 
And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.